All right, so what's going on, guys? Uh, uh, I just want to kind of discuss a little bit about like some of the problems that I see in the Hmong culture, if you guys don't know. So one thing that I want to discuss is racism within the Hmong culture. It's not racism with other races. I mean, granted, you know, depending on different people that you meet, you know, Hmong people, especially like the older generation, are definitely going to have like a lot of their own prejudice against different people. But what I want to discuss is like our own prejudice within our own our own culture. You know, like Hmong people hating Hmong people. And, you know, I hear a lot of people saying like, you know, nowadays the culture has changed and, you know, we're a little bit more supportive. But let me kind of explain a little bit about where I'm going with this. So, you know, when you think about like the Hmong July 4th tournaments or like small sports tournaments, you know, North Carolina, Georgia, Minnesota, Wisconsin, California, wherever, you know, I'm not really too sure about, you know, some of the tournaments that I haven't visited, but let's just say within the last 10 years of the tournaments that I've been in, Hmong people don't like it when you bring other races into your sports team because they're too good. <laughs> They have, or your team has an advantage. You have, you can't have too many white people when you play soccer, or too many Hispanics because they're too good, or you can't have too many black people playing your volleyball team because they jump too high or their arms are too long. And it's almost like, why do we degrade ourselves to this level? You know, as a Hmong athlete, I take offense to that because what are you trying to say about me? You know, I'm small. You know, everybody doesn't really believe in, let's say, my strength when I first started, you know, and I still have people who doubt me to this day, you know, telling me to quit. But I don't let my race, my height, my size, you know, my arm lengths and stuff like that stop me from being the best powerlifter that I can be because regardless of who I meet in the world, I'm going to give them my all. I'm going to show them the utmost respect by giving it my all, showing them what I can do. And when you see these tournaments where Hmong people don't like it when your team is 30 or 20% not Hmong because you're too good, technically, the, pe the Hmong people, and especially a lot of Hmong athletes don't think about this, but when you participate in their, in their sports activities, you're almost saying that I support the fact that we aren't as good as other people. Me personally, I don't like that, so I don't support it. I don't go out to Hmong tournaments because I don't believe in that. And I just don't understand how that works. Um, and on top of, like, let's say the, the, on the athlete moral side. of the story is, you know, I really want to change the way we view ourselves. You know, when we look at ourselves in a lesser in a lesser position based off of our skin color our cultures and stuff like that it's almost saying to the world like we don't deserve we don't deserve or actually let me take it back we deserve everything that came our way if that makes sense you know we deserve the genocides we deserve you know struggling in america for so long we deserve the fact that we don't have these successful people or like you know so many people that's well known and stuff like that and i want to say let's change that don't support a monk tournament who's scared to invite other cultures from the world to compete with us don't support you know the 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 people or don't sell yourself short if other monk people are trying to lowball you because they're monk and they try to find some sort of relationship with you and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of BS, you know, don't sell yourself short because you're Hmong and other people are Hmong and they feel like, you know, you owe them something or they owe you something and stuff like that, all right? So just remember, Hmong people have a big self-hate on themselves and let's change that. Check what I got. They gave me some pizza to bring home to eat, uh, so I'm going to eat three slices, you know, with that garlic sauce on the side right there. Um, again, I'm just kind of happy that I'm able to eat. Uh, my body weight's starting to kind of balance out at 145 in the morning. So based off of what I eat today, what I'm going to do is wake up the next day and kind of monitor um, how my body weight is. So tomorrow, if I wake up at 146, 
um, I'm just going to keep track of everything I ate. So like right now I have three slices of pizza with garlic sauce and I'm going to be drinking a lot of water. So I'm probably going to eat one, maybe two more times. It just depends, but just make sure I'm just going to make sure I keep track of everything that I eat and then see how my body fluctu body weight fluctuates tomorrow. If I hit, let's say 147, that's a little bit more than what I want. So I'm probably going to drop back down and just eat less. So again, if I have three pizzas here, then tomorrow I might eat two pizzas. You know, I'll still have the same diet. I'll just control the portions um, and kind of just, again, monitor my body weight. You know, I want to stay consistently at 145, 146 every morning when I wake up with just my underwear on. That way, when I go to competition, you know, I might not even have to do weight control. Or if I do have to do weight control, it'll just be based off of water. Uh, so, yeah, that's just kind of how, like... Uh, so excuse my little mini closet, but uh, you know, we got my sister's got like a billion shoes, anyways. One just woke up, point. right? Uh, based off of everything that I've been eating last night, I ate you know the food at Faith's house and ate like four slices of pizza in the morning, ate a couple snacks here and there, and I ended up increasing about a pound in the morning. So imagine if I ate all of that again, and then I wake up tomorrow 147, that means I need to eat a little bit less. But just based off of what I ate, and I gain about a pound, as long as I stay consistent. All right, so right we at the gym again. I'm about to do like a crazy change in my deadlift program because I really want to pull some heavy weight at the meet. Uh, but I just want to say like, you know, when you base off your training, you know, don't be scared to hit certain weights, especially if you know like it's going to be a huge PR. Just make sure like, you know, you remember all the stuff that you did before you hit into your training. Like today I'm going to hit something that's going to be really heavy. And during the day of the meet, I'm not going to be nervous when I hit my PR because I remember the work that I put in the gym. You know, a lot of people always get really nervous when they hit like new weights, but I mean, I kind of like it because it's kind of exciting, you know, to think about all the weeks of training that you've done leading up to that number, and it's either you get it or you don't. If you don't get it, it just means you got to keep working and find out what went wrong, and if you get it, it means your training went well. So, uh, I'm about to get ready for some of these heavy men. Alright, so just hit 564 double. Uh, the thoughts that's going in my head right now, I'm not even thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about next week's weight. So if I want to pull 600 at this meet, raw at 145, uh, my, I feel like I need to hit 575 for a double. So all I'm thinking about right now is if I don't get 560 for two sets of twos, there's no point even going for 575 for a double next week. And there's not even any point in trying to get 600 of the meat. So I want to stay focused on what I want to do. I want to stay goal driven and just zone down and just imagine myself pulling 560 over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because if I don't, I ain't going to get what I want. And that's all I want. All right. <laughs> Slingshot, slingshot or, a or a bench daddy or a titan ram Small this is like a that. getaway to make it with a knee wrap what you want to do take the knee wrap wrap around your neck just like a tie go about nipple way down I'm gonna loop it once I'm just gonna tie it one more time make sure it's snug pull on both ends and then kind of test it out so when you go in Make sure these are pointed down, that way they're not in your face. You can put it in the same position as if you were doing a slingshot, right about there in your triceps. Just go down, right there. Same concept. I've never used a slingshot before, but 
try it out. Should kind of give you the same effects. There you go, ghetto slingshot right there. Yep, and we're about to test it out. Drive it up. Nice. Squeeze the bar. Press. Nice. You got it. Come on. Up. Nice. 